In this video, we are going to solve an A-level physics exam exercise, which deals with electrostatic forces and mechanics. Hi, welcome to Physics Made Easy. Today we are going to work on an exam exercise from an A-level test. This exercise has been inspired by a past paper and uh, corresponds to Unit 4 of the A-level physics program. So it will deal with uh, electrostatic forces and mechanics. For other students of IB and AP, this will be also very useful to you. You could find easily a very similar exercise during an exam, so check it out also. So, I'm going to put now the text of the exercise on the screen. Please pause the video and figure it out by yourself. Then I will come back and expose to you the solution. Okay. So we have two spheres, each of the spheres is attached to a rope, which is in turn attached to the ceiling, so they're actually hanging from the ceiling. But the two spheres are charged, so they actually repel each other. That's why they kind of push each other away. And this makes an angle between the rope and the vertical. So what is the first question? Draw a free body diagram for ball A and label and name the forces. Two marks. So a free body diagram, you take a point, and then you can imagine that this point is the sphere and look at all the forces which are on this sphere. Well, you have the most evident one, which is mg, the weight. They ask you to, for the name of the forces, so you have to put it. If you don't, you might miss the mark, so don't forget that. You have tension in the string, so that would be tension. And you have the Coulomb force, the force of repulsion with the other sphere. We could call it electro electrostatic force. Pretty easy to get two marks. But because it's easy, make sure that you do exactly what they tell you to. Label and name. So that was the first question. Second question. Calculate the tension in one of the ropes. Three marks. So here, you think about Newton's laws. When it talks about forces, think about Newton's laws. Here, the sphere is not going up or down. So vertically, it is balanced. So all the vertical components of the force, when you add them together, will equal to zero. So that means that the vertical components of the force are mg, and the projection of t on the y-axis. So I will define a positive direction for the y-axis. So if I define positive direction upwards, I've got t cosine theta minus mg equals zero. So what do they ask? The tension in one of the ropes. So t. T equals mg on cos theta. Now I'll just plug in the numbers. So that was uh, 3.4 grams, so 3.410 minus 3, because we need to use kilograms, 9.81 meters per second squared for the gravitational field strengths, and cos of 30. I will find 3.85 by 10 to the minus 2 newtons. Now, before I conclude and put this number into the little box for that in the test, I look at the number of significant figures I have, or well, I have 2. So my final answer will be 3 t equals 3.9 by 10 to the minus 2 newtons. And I got 3 marks. C. Calculate the Coulomb force between the spheres. So here they're asking you for this force. 
Well, basically, you can just look at the x-axis this time. So, x-axis. The forces are balanced also because the spheres are not moving. They're not moving either horizontally, they're in balance. So, I can actually just list the forces. So, I will have the Coulomb force, so minus F Coulomb, plus the projection of T on this axis, so T sine theta. And that's equal to zero. So I can find the Coulomb force equals T sine theta. So I will use the uh, number without, uh, without rounding up here to do the calculation. 3.85 by 10 to the minus 2 sine 30. And it gives me 1.92 by 10 to the minus 2 newtons. So my final answer for the Coulomb force will be 1.9 by 10 to the minus 2 newtons. Question D. Deduce the magnitude of the charge on each ball. So to find the magnitude of the charge, I can use the fact that I already know the Coulomb force. It's 1.9, 10 to the minus 2 newtons. And I know that the Coulomb force can be expressed as a function of the charges. The Coulomb force is proportional to the product of the charges. So here, it's the same charge, so it's Q squared. And inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them, R squared, R being this value. Now, to find Q, I just need to rearrange this. So I get Q squared equals F R squared on K. Or better, I take the square root, and I can actually put r outside of the square root, r, f on k. I plug in the numbers, be careful, this is centimeters, open 182, multiply by the square root of 1.92 by 10 to the minus 2 newton, divided by the Coulomb constant, 9 by 10 to the 9. And the answer I find is 2.66 by 10 to the minus 7 Coulomb. That is, for the final answer in the answer box, 2.7 by 10 to the minus 7 Coulomb. So question E. Explain what would happen if ball B was given an extra charge. That means that the charge on B would be now larger than the charge on ball A. So, if the charge on B would be bigger, that means that the Coulomb force would be stronger. But remember that the Coulomb force is the same on both balls. So, basically, the force would be the same. The magnitude of the force would be the same on both balls. They would just be pushed a bit more. So, the distance between the balls would increase. Because the magnitude of the force, the Coulomb force on each of them increases and is the same for each ball. And therefore, the angle between the rope and the vertical would also increase. Two more marks. I hope this was useful. Please subscribe because there are more videos that will help you with your exams. So see you around and good luck.